Welcome to the ultimate S3 and Node.js guide. Hey guys, my name is Rahul Aire and in this video, we are gonna see many things regarding creation of bucket, modifying the policy, how can you store the object, all within programmatically using AWS SDK of Node.js. So, but before going on further, every video of, or every tutorial really starts off my preface about why am I doing this? So lately I've seen there are many theoretical videos on AWS regarding telling what are the feature, what are the pricing, but there isn't really any comprehensive video telling actually practically how to do all those things in actual coding itself. So I thought, why wouldn't I really make one of this? So this video is exactly uh, really a practical guide and demo of all of these things. So before moving on forward, this video is highly practical. What that really means is I'm assuming that you are a little bit familiarized to AWS. You know what S3 is, you know what all of these S3 services are. So if you're really absolutely new to AWS, so I would really uh, encourage you to watch this uh, IAM uh, role video or IAM role masterclass by Rohan Arora. And the second video is about S3 masterclass by same by Rohan Arora. So that will give you a base about theoretical understanding about what we are going to do it because this video is actually a really highly practical in nature. So we are not going to talk about all of these things regarding how S3 works, what are the mechanisms behind it. We are actually going to see and what we are going to test about what's important for a uh, developer, what's important for uh, we developers to, uh, to make all of this product. Now, to be fair, the word ultimate in the title really means that whatever we are going to learn over here, you can take uh, you can take these lessons over whatever what I'm gonna show you and you can apply in other S3 products. To be honest, AWS is really huge, and in this video, in this video, we are not gonna cover about S3 versioning, S3 intelligent tiering. We are not gonna cover about Glacier, but still, uh, at the end of this video, if you really feel that I should really cover uh, all of this thing in next video or next part or something like that, please just mention me down in the comment box below and I'll be happy to make the videos on that thing uh, covering about how can you create a glacier bucket using node.js and bunch of different things so without being said that let's get started so let's talk about the introduction what we are going to do here so the way the video is divided is into the two parts like we have separated this video into two parts like the operations on the bucket and the operations on the object so within the within the bucket we are going to talk about uh, CRUD operations like how can you create bucket, how can you read, how can you update and how can you date all the buckets. You are, we are also going to talk about the course, how can you update, how can you get, how can you delete the course and bunch of other things. So and we are going to also talk about the policies, we are going to talk about access control list things and especially in the object scenario what we are going to do is the object is divided into two parts. We are going to test, uh, we are going to create bucket, we can uh, we are going to upload bucket uh, in the locally. And the second part is about we are going to create some APIs to test it whether how can we practically do that. And within that API, we are going to use AWS Lambda and serverless framework to just deploy our project itself. So within that uh, CRUD operation, sorry, we are going to list object, we are going to delete objects, we are going to delete multiple objects. So there's a difference between delete object and delete objects. So we are going to really get object via torrent. And this is more interesting, which I really found within my research that AWS does give you an option to kind of have, uh, you can get the files via torrent itself. I'm not really quite sure when would you really use that, but it's quite really interesting as everyone really loves torrent. So I thought, why wouldn't we really cover this? So uh, how can we really get a pre-signed URL? I will talk about what is this pre-signed in later words. So, and within this, uh, what I'm with our, what I've talked about APIs is we are going to talk about how can you really just upload an object within Lambda Handler? How can you upload a, how can you upload an object to an S3 without Lambda Handler? I mean, technically you will need a Lambda Handler to get to generate and pre-sign URL. But uh, let's say we'll just discuss about what are the difference between put object and pre-sign URLs. And later words, what we'll see is why we need multi-part upload. It's like, can you really see this uh, pre-sign URL max upload limit is just five GB. And to really compensate all of that thing, we really need multi-part upload. But what are the difference between both of these two things? We will just see later words. And before jumping onto VS Code itself, you need two things. First, you need to download AWS CLI locally. And second thing is that you really need to have an AWS account. 
obviously we are going to learn obviously we are just going to deal with s3 so practically you need, do need an s3 account and yes so you do need a credit card or debit card to sign with an uh, aws account so for all the indian users out there if you have a rupee card that might cause you some issues so contact your bank to really switch into like visa or mastercard it's better that you if you have an international uh, payment card it, if, if it's better that you have a card that supports international transactions so without getting further let's start with some pre requirement so what we need to do is we will come over here what we need to do is we will just come over to the console now what you are is what actually you are seeing here is like if you are really wondering about how this my console is really dark theme uh, actually aws doesn't officially support uh, dark theme in their web console but what i'm doing is i'm really using this extension called dark night so night eye which really helps to just kind of make everything in a dark mode which helps to reduce the eye strain which is good for us uh, yeah so what we need to do is we will come over im rules we will generate the credentials and yeah so first what we need to do is if we come over here uh let's say users right we need to add one users let's say we what we'll do is we'll take this as s3 ultimate ultimate g g u i d e ultimate card okay so what we are going to do is we'll give this as a uh, uh, programmatic access to access all of the services uh, what we'll do is we will attach this policy we'll use this administrator access so and just bear in mind that this project is just for us so if you're really delegating this process to uh, other other users or uh, other employees in the in your office just be sure about what permissions are you giving because aws is really critical about what permissions do you give nothing ain't work without permissions so that is what you should really remember so we then said let's try to next we don't need this okay and let's try to create the user okay so as you can see we got this really like uh, access key id and this is we can get, get some this uh, secret access key so what we need to do is i will come over here i'll type out cmd that's what i need and as i have already installed uh, aws cli so what i'll need to do is i'll use aws configure so what will now it will add it will ask my access key id so what i'll do is i'll copy this i will come over here i will paste it over right here okay and the secret keys i will just see this i'll copy this and what i'll do is i'll just paste it over here okay so my default region is mumbai because i live in pune and that this is a really closest region to me so that's why i have chose this one you can choose virginia you can choose europe whatever you like so yeah we default json okay it is all been set so now what we really need is to come over in our vs code itself let's type out npm in it what we need is this package.json npm in it dash y hmm. okay so now what we need to do is uh we will need to install the aws sdk it's like so npm i aws sdk okay so hopefully it should work and one thing that i really forgot to tell you that in this video we are going to use the traditional v2 version of aws sdk and i know that uh, the v3 is right around the corner itself because, but problem is that is the documentation isn't really complete itself it has different syntax which is may or may not be intercompatible with v2 version itself and a lot of people are already using v2 version in production so that is why i have really chose this version so in future if the documentation really gets updated regarding v3 i will be more happy to make a refresher video on this thing so let's try to make uh, our own let's try to first uh, you need the serverless let's try to create a serverless template so what we need to do is if you if you aren't having a serverless framework what you need to do is npm i dash g serverless so you need to install serverless framework globally which we will use later words so it's like first i will do it just because i have done that i will just kind of go and try to type out here sls create dash t aws node.js 
what we need this right now here yeah. okay so now as you can see it has been generated uh so it's a serverless framework it has been generated over here so don't worry i will explain i'll try my best to explain everything what is possibly over here so first of all what we need to do is we'll create a folder called bucket uh let's say and within the bucket what we need to do is we'll create for crud let's say ud right so, and within the crud what we will do is we will create a file called create create bucket dot js okay so what we are going to do is we will come over here and to see how many buckets are there in s3 so as you can see there are only five buckets over here uh, the reason i have blurred this due to the privacy reason but as you can see these are not really much more important for us so just just to give you the proof that there is none over here and what we need to do is right now we will just kind of create the create the bucket so what we need to do is we will come over here we will search for aws guides documentation so i have already searched for that so let's try to use this okay um hmm. let's try to search for s3 s3 where is the s3 okay like okay so let's bring this together mm, create bucket okay this is what we really need we will copy this okay if everything goes well it should create it for us so let me just like uh delete this get me some new one okay uh let's say const aws equals require require in bracket aws sdk and then what we need to do is we need an s3 const s3 equals or uh, let's say aws sorry aws dot and now what we need to do is we will copy paste over here let's say yeah so and now what we need to do is we will just kind of give it some random names like uh let's say i hate aws it's like i hate aws one two three okay and let's try to run this like node uh bucket slash cr ud slash create create bucket as3 create bucket is not a function oh i think there was a typo error so what we can do is we'll come over here I can try to run this the new right okay this is like new aws i think i'm doing lately a lot of mistakes okay let's try to run this okay as you can see i have created this let's try to create another bucket called one two three four okay and i will do this again okay so as you can see uh if you come over here the management console let's try to refresh this okay as you can see i have created this two bucket uh but as you can see this bucket is in us east what if you really want to change the bucket location well you can even do that so what you can do is we will come over here so first of all what we need to do is we will delete the bucket and then again we will recreate that so if we come over here let's say crud right what we'll do is we'll delete delete bucket dot js okay uh, and what we'll do is we'll come over here we will see this and we will just search for d e l e t e delete bucket right hmm. so we'll just copy this okay and we'll come over here we will just do and one thing that you guys need to remember is that we don't really need to remember all of these things just to be sure about what is your goal and then just search accordingly so let's say we will just use i hate aws1234 okay i will just try to do it here okay and then yeah so yeah so i'll do it right i will just come over here creates only like d e l e t 
okay uh, ah so it's giving me a blank response i think aws should do a better job of giving responses so in when you kind of really delete the bucket it gives an empty response so to come over here let's say uh, if i really refresh this okay uh, and let's try to take this over here so as you can see uh, previously there was two bucket and now there is just only one and now what we need to do is so earlier I created the bucket in just uh, US East region but what if we really want to create a bucket in another region so what you need to do is you need to specify the region over here so let's say region so okay you need to specify the region over here it's so like AP dash south dash one okay so and what we'll do is uh first we will just try to delete everything let's say it was one two three four right and then one two three let's try to delete this okay so let's try to create the bucket so what we do is aws hater aws hate love that's what my relationship with aws is really like uh, create right if it works then create okay so as you can see this is giving me an over here let's come over to the our console and see what's going on here so okay as you can see aws hate love is in uh it's like south mumbai region so that is how you can configure it, uh, the region as well so now let's try to read our bucket so for example we'll create this bucket called uh let's say list bucket right if i'm not wrong what we need to do is to read the bucket you need to list bucket dot js again come over to the documentation so control f uh, the documentation sucks really bad man. it's like uh, list l i s t b u c k list bucket okay list buckets right hmm. so what we need to do is the param is just empty blank so what we'll do is just we'll get over here so okay so what we do is we'll paste it over here it's like we will just remove empty blank data okay and and then just come over here like uh take everything over here paste it exactly over here and then now what we need to do is list l i s t list bucket right let's see if it works okay so now as you can see it is giving me a bunch of different names of all of these things let's say this is aws head my other buckets really like see if i miss any everything so these are everything that i really need as of right now so it perfectly works as you see so now what we need is what if we really want to know about the where is the bucket are located well technically you can see in the web console but still you can do it programmatically so what you need to do is again we will create a new folder called new file called get bucket get bucket location so what we need to do is let's say what we need is let's say if we really want to check this uh, aws hate love bucket so we'll copy this okay and we'll come over to over here let's say what we need to do is control f get bucket location right okay location right this is exactly what we need we'll copy this okay and just go over here uh get oh we didn't need a folder it's like delete okay so what we need is a file called get okay and then uh we'll skip we'll try to do it over here it's like same copy uh let's say come over here paste it over here and then what we need is like aws hate love right aws hate love if i'm not wrong this is the bucket name let's try to get the bucket location it's like yeah if we do this over here and then what we need to do is let's say uh get bucket it's like location okay 
as you can see perfectly gives me the bucket was located in mumbai as you can see it gives me a perfect location about it but what if you really want to check whether your book uh, your bucket is uh, enabled for website or not similarly you can check it for this one as well so what we need to do is we will just see uh, whether it's website enabled or not uh, let's see for let's say create bucket itself what we need to do is we'll create a file called get bucket get website dot js just copy everything from here what we need is we'll come over here and then like uh, get bucket select website right and run over here what we need to do is select w e b s i t e okay so as you can see it's giving me an error code like no such configuration is available so what you can do about it well it's quite easy so first for a sample one what we need to do is we'll just create an index.html to just kind of host our file okay so what we need to do is we will just kind of create an emmet okay it's so like as an h1 as uh, hello from s3 that would be just cool and then what we'll do is we'll open this file uh, in file explorer like reveal the file in file explorer right this is our index.html so now what we'll do is we will come over here ws hate love and then we will just uh, upload this file so if you come over here let's try to upload this file and then let's try upload this okay uh there's some couple of steps that you need to do in web console uh, as you can do as you can't do it in the area here in programmatically so let's come back hmm. let's turn to the properties uh as you can see if you come down over here it's like the static website hosting is kind of really disabled so what we need to do is we will enable this like we will enable okay use uh host static website okay we'll do this as index dot html copy this it's like same over here and save changes so hopefully that should kind of really give what we really want so if we really come over here let's try to rerun this again oh now you can see it's giving me a successful response that hey it's been really enabled and now what you need to do is let's talk about course the bucket course itself what we are going to do with it so if we come out with the bucket let's create another folder called cors course and within the course what we need to do is we will kind of get get bucket course okay dot js uh let's let me just uh, close all this file it's really not any of useful to us okay uh we'll just uh we'll the we'll delete the course mm -hmm. we will delete course dot js uh, we will get put bucket just to upload the put put bucket course dot js right so now if we try to get the let's come over to the documentation again uh, over here it's like yeah so let's try to search it over here say get a uh, bucket get bucket course yeah it's like okay this is what we uh, everything is just think same so let's try to take the let's say put bucket like delete bucket right so i it's like copy this or get bucket right so we just kind of do it right here it's put b u c k put bucket course this is what we really need and the title name was aws uh, hate love and just control over this 
uh, let's try to run this. Uh, we don't need this crud. We, we are in the course C O R S. Get a bucket course, right? If I'm not wrong. Okay, course. Let's try to run this. There is something really weird that I'm doing right here. Or really, is it? The fact is, if you come over here, if you're just trying to check over here, let's come to permissions. So as usual, what we are gonna do, what we're trying to do is we are trying to get the course, but actually there is none. So naturally it will kind of give you an error itself. So what we'll try to do is first we will try to put uh, the policy or put the course in the uh, S3 bucket in our S3 bucket. So what we need to do is we just kind of do it like PUT PUSK UCK put bucket course. This is what we need. Okay, this is our parameters. Okay, it's quite huge. So we okay, just come over below. Okay, here yeah, just come down below. I think uh, okay, variable params. We just copy everything. So now, uh, put bucket course right. It's like so. What we need is these are the sample course policy. So if you are really confused about where do you find all this course, just search for policies. Uh, if you really need to uh, find, if you really need some tool, let's say host your S3 bucket for just uh, for as a website, then you can use like uh, just open read policy. That would really allow it. If you just Google it, everything is just there for you. So let's try out over here. What we need to do is bucket name is like AWS eight uh, love. So now what we need to do is we'll copy this. We will paste. Okay. And then what we need to do is again, we will do is like put EUT put bucket course. Oh, it's giving a blank response. That means I think it should, it, it, it has worked well. Let's try to test it over here. So if we come over here, let's try to refresh this. So yeah, as you can see, it's just over there. So as you can see, this policy is well defined. So uh, when we are, when we will create our API, I will show you the more better way of kind of doing all these things together. So if we kind of go back over here and now I think I'm really confident that we will kind of get our codes. So what we'll do is we will just come over here. As you can see, this command is already there. So just put it over here. So as you can see, uh, yeah, so it's giving me an uh, course itself. So it's in the array, it's in the array, it's in the array. So yeah, it perfectly works well. But what if you really now want to delete the bucket, delete the bucket code itself. So that's pretty also, that's really pretty easy. Just search for D-E-L-E-T-E -E -E, delete bucket course. Delete bucket course itself. Copy everything from here. And now just come down below. It's like AWS H dash love and then what we need is we will just copy this we will delete this okay and then let's say delete d e l e t e right okay it's giving blank response that means it has been done let's try to see whether it is it has been done or not okay so as you can see Oh yeah, it's there, but we haven't really refreshed our page. Let's try to refresh it. Okay, so as you can see, it has been deleted very well enough. So, and now what we need to do is we will kind of deal with some policies. So let's try to create a folder called policy. So first, everything just let me clear this up. Okay, uh, yeah. So, okay, let me just, uh, yeah. This bucket line. Let's try to do it. P O L I policy. 
okay and within the policy what we are going to do is again same get bucket policy it's like what we are going to do is uh, get bucket policy dot js we will do is we will get some put bucket policy policy dot js uh, let's say we will just what we need is again we need this as delete okay, d e l e delete bucket policy policy dot js okay and then what we need to do is let's say first we'll try to see whether if it's any policy that we have access to or not so again just come over here try all of these things it's really like uh, s3 uh, get be bucket policy it should be somewhere here get bucket policy yeah if yeah see it's this one so let's try to copy everything from here okay if you come over here itself let's okay secret what we need is just basic copy okay and paste it over here let's try to load bucket what we need is as a policy right P O L I C Y policy and what we need is as get get bucket policy P L I C Y So as you can see we have got our error let's say access denied because there is no such policy over here so like uh, yeah so what we need to do is we will just need to put the policy first in order to get first something out of it so what we need to do is we will just copy everything from here let's say okay what we need to do is we will just put put uck P U C K bucket P policy. So let's try to see what are the parameters over here. Let's say P U T put B U C K E T bucket policy. Okay, yeah. Fortunately, we got this over here itself. So this is kind of really gibberish statement over here. So what we'll try to do is we will search for policy as I really mentioned previously. So what we do is S3 bucket public bucket access policy, right? So what we need to do is like let's say if we come over here, uh, let's say we'll copy this together itself, okay? And then what we need to do is we this like the bucket name is required over here, the string the policy required is policy is required over here, and the policy should be wrapped in the string itself. So what we do is let's say the okay the P policy should be capital your policy oh okay let's try to do over here okay the colon was missing let's try to paste it if I'm not wrong this is what we really need template strings yeah okay yeah, now it's better sometimes I really get confused which one to use or which one to not but nonetheless let's try to see whether it works or not AWS hate love right uh, let's see whether if it works or not okay let's try to put PUT if I'm not wrong okay what really happened it's like mal performed policy mal form policy oh one thing that I really forgot is that instead of here the ARN format is uh, here our, it should be our bucket name itself right uh, sometimes I really do pathetic mistakes let's try to oh come over here on uh, n right uh, let's say it's an existing bucket object so let's try to do it again oh yeah now it's been uploaded successfully let's try to see it on our web console uh, over here 
so this is where our bucket configure shows up let's try to refresh this yeah it has been successfully uploaded over here that is main important key so as you can see over here this is may really been uploaded over here so now finally what we can do is we can get our get bucket policy over here so let's try to go somewhere upward okay so let's say what's the problem i forgot to really just uh, rename this it's like aws hate love it's like get right so that's how we really just get some result and as you can see the previously we were getting that mal uh, mal perform policy because we were kind of really trying to get uh we're we're not having the correct bucket name so this small mistake really happens a lot of time so we should really care about it and now the final thing is to delete the bucket policy itself uh what we need is let's say copy this together it's like now let's say var param params is equal to let's say uh capital bucket bucket name okay bucket it's, it's only bucket okay okay it's aws aws hate love right aws hate love so now what we need to do is uh we'll take this from over here itself okay uh we'll just put it over here it's like the -E 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 delete bucket okay if you come over here delete bucket policies just close this everything and then finally what we need is if we come down over here node get get bucket policy so like delete it should, it should be delete okay so as you can see it's really gone over here so right now oh let's say it's there let's try to refresh this page oh as you can see it's been perfectly deleted so now uh, the final list is just to get our access control list so what we need is so i think it's kind of really option but still let's let's see how it really goes uh within the bucket itself what we need is as uh, acl right if i'm not wrong acl access control list so the bucket uh, it's like so let's say what we'll do is we will just within this uh, acl folder itself uh, we'll create a file called get bucket acl right bucket acl dot js so what we need to do is get bucket acl oh it was there so what we need to do is we will just come over here acl and then what we do is get bucket acl okay c small and l okay yeah so as you can see we are getting this object in the full grant we have the full permission of this so that's it really successful these are the couple of really basic parameters over here obviously there are hundreds of apis in sv which you should definitely check out and i highly encourage you to do that so now ultimately let's move on to creation of object so what we are going to do here we in the create in the crud object itself what we are going to do is we will try to uh, create uh, objects uh, sorry create not object we'll try to upload the object we'll first list the object in the bucket and then what we'll do is we'll just delete the object we try to delete the multiple objects we'll try to interestingly get the object via torrent itself and then what we'll do is we'll just get the object via pre-signed url which 
The concept of pre-signed URL, I'll explain you in just in the when I when we will deal with an API itself. So now, uh, first let's try to get some sample files. So go to the pexels.com. Let's try to download some images. Okay. Uh, what we need to do is it's like a home discover, right? Okay. So city night. That would be cool. Uh, let's try to download everything. Okay, uh, let's try to download this and ultimately uh, this one would be fine. Okay, uh, now let's come over here. Let's try to see where our object is. Let's try to upload over here. Okay, and then upload over here. So, okay, let's go back just go back objects uh, let's upload this hmm. and another this one okay so yeah it's been uploaded it's been total of 5 mb so it's pretty huge uh, so now if we come over here if we click this as you can see every object uh, every name of the object is denoted as a key itself this is much more important to really notice so as you can see this is an ARN of this one this is an S3 URI key and this is the object URL itself so if you really try to open this in the other link just because it's private it will not be open itself we will see how can we really open this in later words with with private it's with private settings uh so what we need to do is we'll come over in the vs code itself what we'll do is we will delete this so don't worry every code what i'm trying to do is in in the github repo itself everything is bundled together so you don't need to do it so why am i doing is just to maintain your focus on particular topic right now so what we'll do is we will come over here and then what we'll do is sorry we will create a folder of object o b j e c t s objects and then what we'll do is we will uh, list objects l i s t list objects list objects dot j dot dot j s we will delete d e l e d e delete bucket sorry delete i'm sorry delete objects object dot js i should be careful because uh delete object and delete objects are two different apis which provide which is provided by uh, aws itself so now let's say d-e-l-e-t-e -E -E, delete o-b-j-e-c-t objects dot js okay and the last one what is really like get object by torrent na? get object torrent this one is quite interesting like t o torrent right get torrent object dot js and then what we need to do is get object uh, what we need to do is again uh, pre signed url dot js these are the five most property what we are going to see over here so let's come over to the documentation uh, hmm. let's say list object okay uh, okay yeah list objects so i think it's s let's try to hmm. yeah it's right i thought it was wrong because what I'm doing is wrong. It's so like let's say there is no max key. It's so like this is what we will see. Okay, let's clean up this clunk. Hmm. We don't need this max key as parameter, we want unlimited. So the maximum amount of uh, object that it written is I think it's somewhere around thousand. Let me just confirm it, right? okay so yeah it returns up to thousand objects 
so make sure uh, it's really like if you having object exceeding that just try to find out some alternative solution but for our case it's more than enough so let's try to see over here okay let's show them over here let's uh now what we need to do is const const aws equals require uh in bracket a is like aws sdk and then what we need to do is uh uh const s3 equals new uh, aws dot s3 so i have to kind of do it then you can wrong one but no worries we'll just do it in one thing over here so now what we need to do is like node objects slash list list obj cps okay what happened again again i did the same mistake it's like aws hate love i should be cautious about it okay yeah so yeah so as you can see i have got all of this bucket it's like let's say this one is called we have uploaded three images from pixels if i'm not wrong our index.html and this one is one two and this one is three right so i think it just works pretty much fine so before deleting what i'm going to talk what i really want to do is uh, we'll try to get this object by torrent itself uh yeah so what we'll do is we'll just come over here it's like get object torrent right t o okay get object torrent so let's see what we need to do is over here we'll copy this parameter okay we need to modify this and aws uh h dash love and then what we need to do is we'll take this uh what we need to do is we'll come over here and then what will if we come over here let's try to get this of carlos olivia okay and then what we need to do is we will paste it over here and then what we need to do is we'll try to run over this like let's say get uh get object get object uh torrent uh, t o double -R, r e n t oh as you can see this one is giving me a buffer that is pretty interesting and also pretty useless for us uh, we can't really access this buffer. So what we need to do is we need to convert this buffer into base64 and then converting that into again a file itself with file system module that what we get in built in with node.js itself. So what we are going to do is we will kind of really import a file system. Let's say const fs equals require uh, require in bracket uh fs right and then we need to kind of really uh, install one module which will convert our array buffer which is this one our into a base 64 module and then which we can in turn really convert into our file itself so what we need to do is we will kind of really install a library called let's say npm i a or uh, a b two like array buffer to base 64 ab to b64 so now what we need to do is let's say instead of console log the data what we'll do is we will just const buff buff means buffer is equal to uh, error this sorry what we need is as data data dot body dot buffer Okay, the way it is encoded now this process is not actually mentioned in documentation i have figured it myself by hidden trial process 
so that is what i'm going to be sharing with you right now so what we need to do is let's say const const base uh, 64 string string equals uh, a a b oh, we haven't really imported this let's say const a b to uh, b64 equals require a b to b64 right so then what we need to do is a b to b64 in bracket what we need as let's say okay we need to convert it as a b2 dot a b2 i think the creator should have done a little bit good job of simplifying it but works for our process so what we need to do is finally what we'll do is we'll do is fs dot write file what we'll do is we'll just kind of do uh, write as s3 s3 dot data 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 s3 let's say s3 data dot to double r torrent and then what we need to do is uh, we'll define as base64 string uh, what we, and finally we need to define as encoding as en encoding to uh, base64 like uh, okay coding as base64 so hopefully it should work if there is no error let's try to test it okay npm we don't want this okay Okay, what was that error? Seems that we got an error. Not quite honestly. But if you come over here, if you really come over to this documentation, you already see that AWS S3 does not support bit three protocol uh, launched after the May 2016. So if we come over here, what we were doing, we were doing everything in Mumbai region. And according to this uh, timeline article, what I really su suggested is that the Mumbai region was announced on let's say June 26 that means it was post during that date itself so it's normally what will do it it will give uh, the file but it will not generate it like it will not uh, send the file via torrent itself so what can you do about it so first of all I like to address this issue over here that this one is like callback must be returned in function so before making this video after in my initial trial itself uh, i don't know whether aws has really made some changes in v2 or not but it was absolutely working fine for me but what we can do is right now we can take this uh, like a base 65 string and convert it by any any online converter from base 64 to uh, let's say file converter but before that what i have done is i have created an initial bucket called aws torrented and this bucket is in the region let's say if i will go over here this bucket is in uh, us east virginia region that means it was really before it was 2016 this region was present so what it really do is we'll copy this like uh and one important thing is that if you come over to the permissions like i have uh i have enabled all the public access including this uh, object if you come over here let's say if, you, if i click over here and then if I really go to the permissions, let's say it's the, everyone can read this file. So now what I can do is I will come over here. Let's say I will copy this. Okay. And then if I'll, what I'll do is I will just paste it over here. Control V. And I will, what I'll do is I'll just come over here. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll do is copy. And then what I'll do is over paste it over here. Let's see. Yeah, let's try to run this again. So what will initial happen is we will get that uh, torrented. Uh, let's say sorry, that callback error. But we'll successfully able to get our torrent file. How? Let's find it out. <coughs> okay. So as you can see, we have got our error. But no worries. We can really take all this file. Let's say and come over here. So as you can see, this website really enables you to convert your base64 string into file itself. So let's say if you come over here, 
say decode file okay it has already detected that we are kind of trying to decode and into a file itself so as you can see these are the trackers itself the uh, these are the really like binary conversion but we are interested in just downloading the file itself so what we can do is we'll download this and what we'll do is we'll open this file so i have really as fdm as my torrent client you can use BitTorrent as you want and uh, let's try to download this as you can see it's perfectly getting downloaded let me just open this one hmm. okay so as you can see this harry cookie over here as you can see we have successfully got our file and i know it was a rough process and it's this process this torrent process is bit useless i mean totally useless because it doesn't have uh, support for all region itself so it's always better that you download this file in together itself let's say what direct download method and now it's time to delete the object itself so if you come over here let's say here i have naturally opened this delete object itself so what we can do is we will copy everything from here let's say copy and if you come over here itself let's say if you want what we'll want to do is we'll uh, just open this one get object we'll paste everything here our bucket name was i think aws hate love and then our object key was if we come over back here let me just confirm it right okay aws hate love let's say if you want to read the index.html that would be more uh, enough for us as of now okay let me just paste it over here hmm. uh, control f just uh, format this one okay so let me just get this what we want to do over here okay and now paste it over here itself so let's try to read this one so what we can do is node object object uh, slash d e l e d -E, delete object okay then let's see if it works oh uh, cannot find module okay let's see what's the path is okay let's see what was there oh it's objects okay yeah so now what we have seen is we have got this blank error so let's try to go to the console and let's try to refresh this whether this index.html has been deleted or not so as you can see it has gone so it has been deleted successfully but what if you really want to delete multiple files at the same time itself well we have another instance of api called delete objects just a difference of between object and objects okay so we will just take this var param and it will just take all of this key come over here delete objects okay paste it over here itself right and then what we need to do is we will take the parameter itself let's say the keys or uh, what we'll take this one pixels okay and okay let's try to paste this take another key uh, let's say this robert so we just take this first one i think okay Paste it over here. Let's change the bucket name to AWS hate love and then take everything from here. Again, the basic thing we need to copy. Uh, let's try to erase all this uh, commented code. Okay. Hmm. And let's try to format this again that looks pretty so let's try to get this like delete objects okay uh, deleted error none i mean if it's deleted or not let's try to check it into the console so if you come over here if we refresh this yeah as you can see it has been deleted so now there is one more 
way that is we have left so what if we, what if you really say that you know you want to share this file with only specific person and you don't want to disclose you don't want to even make it public how can you do that so for example let's take this like pixel roberto nixon if you open this url into another tab what you will get is access design error but what if you really want to share this with one of your friend or one of your user for just a certain period of time well aws does give you an option called presand url itself with what you can do is you can create a custom url for that project which does have an expiry timestamp by default it is about 3600 seconds that means one hour and you can extend it as much as you really want it so we are just going to create exactly the same thing so as you can see in the permissions as well so it has it only has a read and write uh, permissions from the owner as well the uh, public doesn't have any access to this uh, this file or, or this object as well so what we can do is right now if we come over here what we need to do is we will search for get sign url g e t s uh, i get sign url okay so now it's like so there are uh, three methods actually so one is if you really come over here let me just close this one so in case of really if you just want to receive the file you should actually pass the parameter of get object and params if you want to just upload a file uh, you can uh, you can really specify this parameter as put object later words in the api section we will see how can you really do this and also uh, during the multi part process you can also specify upload part here instead of get object or put object we will see later words but first just we want to get a receive and file itself you want to get the present url so what we can do is we will go over here copy everything just come back over here okay and then come over here let's say what i need to do is bucket name is aws hate love and our key name is if you come over here uh, let's say our key name is this one okay let's come over here hmm. let me just copy this and i will paste it over here and again what we need to do is we will just come over here take everything from here and then come over here just copy over here okay let's try to just uh, run this one let's say node obj ects object slash uh, get get object get object uh, pre-signed url okay yeah so you can see this is our own sign then let's try to open this oh you can see it has given an error so use aws4 so what it really saying that this is not a supported mechanism so what it actually does is aws require a signature version while accessing the pre sign url itself so in case majority of the aws region supports the v4 which is the latest and greatest so is that is what we are going to use over here so if you come back over here how can you really specify that so let's say we'll take this as let's say signature uh, version and then what we need to do is v4 okay and then what we need to do uh, if it really works let's try to see if it works or not okay hmm. Hmm. let's try to open this again we got an error and the error that i've done was really purposeful uh, because we need to kind of specify the region as well here so what we need to do is we will come over here and we will just take in a comma and then specify region to ap south one so if you don't define a region it automatically assumes that you want to fetch some files from the virginia region so let's try to do some ap south one and hopefully it should work Okay, and let's try to open this. So as you can see, we have we can successfully access the file right now. The default timestamp is or default expiration time is about 3600 seconds. You can extend whatever you want, or you can really just 
delete whatever you want so if you really want you can see let's say uh, if you want to just uh, take custom timestamp we can define as expires ex uh, let's say i think i think it, it's in param okay it's like uh, ex p i r e s expires in 10 let's say not i think 20 would be fine for us let's try to run it okay okay let's try to refresh this okay as you can see the request has expired so you can set a custom time period whatever you want but for our case uh, it was really fine it was really for demonstrative purpose and now here it comes the part about developing an api itself so what we are going to do we are going to create an api where you can just upload a small file with just a base 64 string using uh, let's say api called put object and then we will see like why do we need pre-signed url itself when it comes to post itself what are the difference between uh, uploading files by put object method or versus pre-signed versus pre-signed url method and why do we need multi-part upload where the maximum size limit is just 5 tb itself we'll see every bit step by step so let's talk about the put object itself what we are going to do with it so in put object let's say this is our uh, let's say this is our pc what we need to do is we will send a file a file name and the base64 encoded string to lambda function and then what we'll do it will convert everything and it will process all the data and then it, it will upload it to the rs3 bucket so from now onwards we will jump uh, back and forth from front end to back end front end to back end itself so before moving on further i would really like to show you something so i would like to tell you show my github repo where i have already created so the reason why i'm really showing you is because we are using serverless framework for those who guys who aren't really aware of serverless it's quite a behemoth topic itself but what i'm gonna take uh, but i'm what i'm really like to explain in brief instance like so it has certain criterion parameters so let me just zoom this one first forwards okay now it's better so it has a service parameter let's say the service has its own name as you can see it's uh we let's say if we come over here uh let's say the so when we created the template it automatically got it named like ultimate guide so in previously i had named this like a little bit different words so this is a for serverless framework and when you create a serverless framework it all automatically provides about provider so in our case the provider is aws our runtime since we are on lambda our runtime is node.js 14 version and the lambda hashing version is about something that is the serverless framework gives for us the staging is dev the region is api or uh, ap south that is mumbai we need to specify everything because everything uh, without this it won't work and let's say from the newer version of this the syntax has slightly been changed uh, because uh, if we if we don't specify this that api and should start name with service to true it will give you warning but it will still work so and then what we need to do is we will need to define some iam rules permissions in order to really just kind of make our lambda function enable to upload a files to s3 itself we need to give certain permissions let's say we will first we will give the permission about get object we will give the permission of put object and then in multi-part upload itself what we will give is we will give the permission of uh, uh, let's say about multi-part upload itself and so now what it really has it's it has its own resource so what this resource really means that in this star means that it has an access to all the resource uh, that is contained within this bucket itself but not all the permissions the im role permissions is this one only it the lambda function the lambda function can only perform this much permission itself so and this is our environment variable just like uh, we have an environment variable in express like we install the dot n package similarly we have our own environment variable over here this is our custom variable itself and this is our function when where we create all lambda function as well so to give a perspective about what it is so first we create some functions uh, with a, this is the put object called this is the function name 
and this is where our lambda is located so let's say this is our uh, let's say js file called put object in that we need to kind of really deploy all that handle of handler function as well so in order to really trigger the lambda function because everything in serval serverless depends upon event so what you need to do is we will just kind of invoke the events with an http api so what serverless framework essentially does is it will go it will check all of these things and it will create an api gateway behalf of us since already we have uh, configured the credential in just uh, aws cli so it will pick up automatically it will form a cloud formation stack and from that from uh, from there itself it will just deploy our lambda function it will deploy our uh, api gateway and bunch of other things as well so what we kind of do is so first we will just copy everything from here okay and if you come over here let's uh let's come over here i think yeah hmm let's uh, like let's control over here let's paste it over here itself so we need some service name framework number and service name okay oh uh, yeah so if you come over here let's just it uh, and the reason why I'm really copying all of this thing is to be efficient otherwise it will take me it's like ages to really write on my own so what I'll do is I'll just rename this s3 ultimate guide G U I D E ultimate guide if it's not wrong say ultimate guide okay hmm so now what we need to do is we will need to define our environment variable so what we need to do is we'll come over here and then what we need to do is define our custom and by the way you need to be utmost cautious when it comes to writing the yaml because it's really indent, indent sensitive itself so what we need to do is bucket name and then what we need to do is like aws uh, hate love right uh, if we are not really cautious about it will just not work so let's try no we don't want this aws hate blur so what we need to do is let's say aws hate aws hate love 2 let's deploy this another bucket over here and now what we need to do is if we come over here itself to just come down a little bit over here uh, when it comes to really just uploading files as well you need to kind of specify the course configuration in order to get file in order to get the just a pre-signed url itself in order to really just do all of these things uh to be honest what is this really just if if we really come over here this is a custom parameter called resources now uh as serverless framework is really huge uh just ping me up if you really want to know uh, more about serverless i will make an in-depth video on this one as well so what we can do is we will just create a resource the resource bucket is upload name and the type what we want to deploy is the bucket so this is what the aws colon colon bucket over here and then pro and then we will when we go to the properties itself that the bucket what we what we what we want to define our bucket name the bucket name is about from the property about custom bucket name if you come over here this is our custom bucket name so and this custom bucket lies in exact same range of provider itself so if you come over down over here so and then access control is private we will define our course configuration and then course rule to get method allowed and by the way you don't need to remember any of these things just google and it will get everything most of the thing online even i have copied from stack overflow itself and then what we need to do is ultimately this is an optional header in e tag itself what we, why do we need this and for what purpose we will just discuss later words but for now let's copy this and just come over here okay and then okay just okay um, paste it exactly over here uh, hopefully we are right and then what we need to do is we need to take some functions okay and then functions let's say uh, we need to define as function over here 
so let's say put object right so if we copy over here let's say okay control c let's say if we control v so what we are going to do is we will just take this uh, object as i have previously explained we will specify the course true otherwise it won't work as we are on the local host itself so now to be more little bit precise and accurate so what we will do is we will just uh, come over here let's say we will just copy this to really save this in a lambda handler function just do this over here and then for now let's try to delete this because we just want to focus on creating the api itself okay delete now what we need to do is we will create the front end okay we need we will actually want to create a folder okay uh, frontend front end okay and then what we need to create an uh, api itself right api okay so we don't want this it's like uh, delete okay we want to create here ap api okay and within front end what we need to create is index i d e x index dot ht html so what we need what we will do is just to be more efficient uh just me reopen this terminal so what we want what we'll do is we'll come over here we'll open this and just copy the code to be more uh, just a little bit fast in development process let's say come down a little bit control v control c and control v over here Okay, let's try to open this in uh, via live server extension okay so as you can see it's been open let's now open the console side by side okay i don't want to just ignore all of this thing so now what we'll do is okay uh, for example we will comment all of these things we will open once uh, once at a time when it's needed so now what we need to do is we will just create a front end front end put object put object dot js itself so if you really noticed over here we don't need this handler as of right now uh, but let it just be here uh, so what we need to do is if we come over here so there are basically three types over here uh, if even if you come over here i can show you so there are three ways we can up we are going to upload the file this is called put object this is we by this way we are going to upload it via pre-signed url itself and this is interesting called uh let's say a uh, large file upload itself and now what we need to do is let's say if we come over here and let's try to inspect this so if you come over here this is our object this is the input type file and id is uh, put object and put object btn so now what we need to do is if you come over here just go up right here let's say document dot get element uh, by id in bracket let's say put put object btn btn dot add event listener in bracket let's say define as click and then what we need to call it as a function to invoke let's say if we okay over here so now for now let's just test it if it works or not console dot log uh let's say um, it clicked okay let's come over here for now let me just uh, for one minute okay just close this Hmm. okay okay so it's working so yeah okay so now what we need to do is so let's say const const put object put object uh, file input equals document dot get element by id in bracket let's say put put 
object okay and then what we need to do is let's say const file equals put object file dot files in bracket let's say zero and then if it what if it really works then let's try to console dot log in bracket file f file okay um, then let's say if it works or not okay let's choose the file itself okay let's try to take this one okay so it works perfectly so what we need to now is we will need the name so let's say if you come over here so let's say const const uh, file name itself is equal to file dot name okay and then if you come over here let's try let's try to file name okay and then let's try to access it if it works or not okay let's take this let's try to send this so as you can see it has perfectly mentioned it what we really need and then and now what we need to do is we need to initialize let's say const const uh, reader equals new new uh, file file reader okay and then what we need to do is and then what we will really need to do is let's say reader dot on loaded on load end is equals to let's say we'll take it as a function and then what we need to do is we'll take this and if you come over back here let's say const let's say const base 64 uh, base 64 string equals reader reader dot result okay reader dot result and ultimately what we need to do is just console log uh, the console log the result thing base 64 but before that uh, let's say reader reader dot read uh, read data uh, read let's say read data as you are in bracket what we need to pass it as a file and then let's see if it works or not hopefully it should work hmm. so yeah this is our base 64 encoded string this is what i was really talking about but for now we really don't want this we should really skip this so what we can do we can really remove this by split property of uh, that we get in javascript so what we need to do is we will just split this called sp split in bracket let's say our base 64 uh, base 64 and let's say uh, what we need to do is we'll define as one and let's try to check it up mm -hmm. okay and uh, over here let's go in from there so as you can see we have got out here so the one thing that you really need to remember that this method is only really useful for uploading low file or uh, low or the object which has a really uh, less file size itself if you really want to upload a really tons of object this is a really this is not a good way of doing that uh, why let's try to check this i have this tenet movie which is of 16 gigabytes if you can if you check over here 16.3 gigabytes let's try to open this and let's try to send this up right here as you can see cannot read property split of null so why is that there is a little bit issue in this method that this method is just suitable for uploading a file with which has a particular range let's say 10 mb or 20 mb is sufficient than that uh, if you really want to try to upload more than that it will kind of congest your lambda uh, cpu power and compute power as well or the memory power in this compute power itself and it's really not good so how can we tackle that we will really see by using how can we do that by using presign url itself 
so for now let's focus on itself so right now uh, what we have our let's say this is our console base string so now let's say const a data let's say data info data info equals uh, let's say base 64 string equals base 64 string and then what we need to do is let's say file name equals file name itself and then since if you really come over here we have already uh, installed the access cdn itself so that will really help us to send the request so now for example let's say if you come over here uh, say const uh, const let's say url equals so for right now we haven't really generated the url uh, which will do it very really soon so let's say if we really do over here so axis dot post okay we don't want this axis dot post uh, in bracket let's say url comma a uh, da da data info and then what we need to do is we will define as then uh, let's say then catch then result and let's say okay then let's say console let's say console dot log uh, result or es let's just minimize this res okay uh, yeah and then what we need to do is let's say console dot error uh, let's say console dot error uh, in bracket let's say p double r for now uh, let's come over to here in api let's create our let's say put 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 object dot js so if you come over to the handler what we have done is we will just uh, cut over here cut paste and then if we will just put over here let's say like expor exports dot handler equals let's say what we do is we'll define as async function async uh, event okay and within that event what we need to do is we will define as const as body uh, body we need to parse that incoming it's like json dot parse in bracket event dot body and let's say for example const uh, base 64 string equals so let's say uh, body body dot base 64 string okay and then what we need to do is uh, const let's say file uh, name equals body dot uh, file name okay and then what we need to do is finally let's say const it's like bu buff equals let's say buffer dot from let's say in bracket base 64 string and then what we need to do is as encoding as base 64 and then what we need to do is let's say try let's say try catch okay and then what we'll do is come over here and just error try let's say uh, const params params is equals to let's say what we need to do is let's say for body b o d y equals let's say buff and then what we need to do is let's say key equals file name and then what we'll do is let's say await uh, a w a await await s3 dot put or put object in bracket let's say params and then if everything really worked well 
then what we'll do is we'll just signify everything like return what we'll return is status code of uh, 200 but before here we need to kind of define as promise so during my initial experiments i found out that it doesn't work without if we define if we really didn't uh, specify the promise over here so let's see what we now define is two headers let's say h e a d e r s headers so what we need to define let's let's say over here so before that let's say if you come over here then what we need to now is let's come over to my github repo so to be more efficient and faster uh, let's say apis let object apis put object okay mm -hmm. what we need to return is this body or file uploaded okay and then okay so now what we need is let's say we take this okay so now what we are really returning is the status code if everything worked well this header as it requires to kind of really uh, just in order to really uh, the course to work properly so if everything really failed what we'll do is we'll just copy this paste it over here we'll pass as 500 that is um, let's say error and then what we'll define as let's say uh, body is equal to json dot stringify in bracket let's say e double r o r error in bracket e double r dot stack dot stack okay and also we need to kind of console log things uh, console dot log in bracket error if everything if any error occurred you can see in our cloud law cloud watch itself so yeah okay let's come over to the here and now what we need to do is if we will see we'll just remove this as you can see this is our put object this is our post request and this is our course is equal to true so let's try to deploy this let's see if it works sls deploy so as you can see it has been deployed over here so first what we'll try to do is we will check whether this bucket has been created or not so if you come over here again let's come over to the R here and let's try to see our s3 bucket let's try to just zoom it over here so as you can see it has created our own uh, let's say this bucket called aws hate 2 this was our previously aws torrented itself and uh, honestly it has created another thing this is for serverless framework uh, it actually it actually creates a bucket to host the file itself and then it later works create uh, other resources like this bucket itself what we have seen over here and then what we need to do is we will come over here this is where what we need to do over the, all of the things so now let's pick uh, copy this and let's see if it works everything fine or not so if we come over here to our front end okay and then you are let's, uh, let's say okay and then okay data info okay so this is what we will really need as base 64 string rest and console log file okay if everything work together then this it will, it's just good enough for us so we'll just close everything right now uh, we'll just take this okay uh, okay mm, okay yeah so now let's choose a file let's say anyone let's say this pixel harry cook let's say carlos olivia this is fine let's try to send this okay status error hmm what's this error let's try to see our cloud log watch cloud watch itself okay s3 cloud cloud watch okay there were two validation so let's say missing a uh, key in found param bucket okay oh the bucket was missing over here so what we need to do is we will come over here uh yeah so one thing that i forgot is let's say b u c k e t bucket and everything should be capital over here okay the bucket is let's say our process dot env 
dot bucket name which we have initialized that let's say in serverless framework okay if you come over here okay, this is okay this is uh, small lower case itself okay let's try to do over here um, let's comma let's try to deploy it again sls deploy oh this time is it was quite really quick the url has hasn't been changed which is a good thing let's see if it really works or not right now okay if you come over here hmm. uh, let's say come over here oh the file has been perfectly uploaded so let's see if what if we have really done over here so let's just go back oh as you can see this file has been uploaded let's try to upload another one object another object as well so what we can do is we will choose everything over here so for now let me just uh, don't want to console log this one so let's choose this okay and then let's say harry cook uh, let's try to send this okay it's so like file uploaded let's try to come over here let's try to refresh this as you can see file has been successfully uploaded but there is a downside to it which i really previously mentioned that if your file size is really large enough then this method is really terrible this method is only useful let's say if you are uh, want to upload just your profile pic or just upload some small size images and in those cases this method is more than enough but what if you really want to upload a large file size in that case pre-signed url comes into play before moving on forwards if you really go to stack overflow itself and see uh, what is the difference between put object and up s3 dot upload itself so you will see that it's kind of both really similar itself but s3 uh, s3 dot upload kind of really intelligently detects that it, whether it's stream whether it's buffer or whether it's something or else you can also use it to upload the files via streaming which is much more enhanced but for our purpose what we have really demonstrated it's more than sufficient so now let's move on to the pre-signed url now what is pre-signed url so in traditionally what we have seen is we send the let's say we send just file name and base64 encoding to our lambda function but in this case what we are what we will do is we will just send the file name to our lambda function and it will generate uh, let's say a pre-signed url itself and then what we need to do is we will get that pre-signed url and then send a put request to our s3 bucket so what are the advantages of it in previously we would really require the ram and the compute power to generate to really send and upload our file to s3 bucket itself in that case we are doing none instead uh, instead we are really bypassing the lambda function directly uploading this file to s3 itself so this is much more really and this is a much more positive side as well but the limitation is you can just upload a file object of just a five gigabytes itself uh, if you try to do it it will give you an error what kind of error let's try to slow see it how what it kind of give error it gets so first of all it will just kind of we will go over here okay so now let's try to just control it over here okay and then what we'll do is we will just uh, comment this to um, multi-part upload itself and then what we need right now is to just let's say front end front end uh, pre-signed say s, s is capital pre-signed uh, url url and then what we need to do is let's say dot js for some weird reason my photoshop is open and i don't don't want it that way so now what we will do essentially is we will just copy exact same code uh not much has been changed over here so what we'll do is we'll come over here itself uh index.html and then what we'll do is let's see for pre-signed itself what is there uh, let's say pre-signed url and pre-signed url btn okay let me just uh, close this also close this one uh, we don't need handler so that's why we will delete this uh, for now let's try to come over here 
okay put object right we will just do it as uh, okay and then b let's say b t n b is capital i, th I guess okay so let's first try to console log the file let's say console uh, console dot log in, la in bracket just cli ck clicked rest everything we will just uh, cut over here we don't need that and so first for now let's say we will just do everything over here we don't need this we if we if we come over here what was that uh let's say pre-sign type right okay pre-sign upload input pre-sign file input is equal to let's say if we will come over here right and then file name is equal to file dot name hmm. so now let's try to see if it works oh over here Okay, cannot read property name of undefined. What's the problem? Okay, now I have got it. It's really like uh, it's this one. Pre-signed URL. File, comma file, name. Okay. Not much has changed. Okay, sorry we haven't really choose any file. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now. Let's see if this I master class. Hmm. Yeah. So if you can see over here. So now what we need to do is let's say this is a const. We, what we'll do is we'll keep this as pre s i g n e d u r l, and then what we need to do is let's say a x i o s axis dot. So we don't want Alexa for business. Axis dot post in bracket. Uh, let's say URL uh, comma what we'll do is we'll define as file name in bracket let's say file uh, name itself right and then uh, what we'll do is let's say then then catch res then what we'll need is let's say console dot log bracket res okay <clears throat> or if any error occurred console dot error in bracket let's say error so now what we need to do is we will just come over in api uh, what we need to do is let's say pre s i g n e d pre signed u r l dot uh, j s it's like s is s i is capital s i g n e d right okay so this is what is there oh let's come over this come over with this one copy everything over here and then try to paste it over here exactly so now what we need is we did we just need param as bucket and the file name so over here okay we don't need a buffer we also don't need a base64 string it's like me in me right okay yeah so okay so to really generate in pre-sign what we need is here is region or right, signature version signature uh, version let's say to uh, v4 and then region to let's say ap south one so now let's say if everything works okay so let's say const url itself equals await s3 dot get sign url in bracket let's say what we'll do is put object and then what we'll do is we'll pass the params and now what we need is finally is if we come over here everything the template is just fine so what we need is really we need to j so stringify the file json dot stringify in bracket let's say pre s i g n e d u r l 
3 sin e bar l is equal to u r l okay uh, let's come over here uh, copy everything over here exactly so uh, yeah so we this one so always really uh, take care about indentation so what we need is like it is giving me an error because everything is same so now what we'll just change it right pre s i g n d u r l and then what we need is let's say uh say pre s i g n d u r l okay let me just check if everything is correct the expo dot handler um, okay everything is just fine uh let me just take it up right here so let's deploy oh sorry we don't want this put object we actually wanted this like let's say uh let's say pre s i g n e d u r l that was my mistake let's try to do it again sorry uh that the uh, like the p should be small camel casing okay so let's try to just copy this okay and let's try to paste it over here hmm. let's try to get our pre-signed url if everything works fine choose the file let's say uh, Okay, let's say this I am masterclass. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's try to do this one KIB file. Okay, binary file. Okay, this is like no course origin is present. Oh, I really did a massive blunder over here. So, what was actually it was there is really like uh, what the mistake that I did is. It should be here it should be pre-signed itself pre-signed url okay it's like here uh, i should pay a little bit little bit more attention okay so come over here let's try to sls deploy let's try to test it again take this send a file okay uh there we go we just uploaded this file and this is our really massive bulky URL string. So now what we need to do is let's try to just upload this. What we'll do is we will just come over here in our front end and let's try to see, let's say const, const uh, u, uh, let's say uh, pre-signed, pre-signed uh, URL equals res, dot data dot uh, if it's if i'm not wrong it's uh, i think it's pre-signed url right if, if we come over here oh uh, yeah so it's this one copy and then paste it over here so now what we need to do is again axis axis dot put one thing you need to remember that this is a put request from now so let's say pre pre sign url and then what we need to do is it's just like uh, any file okay and then what we need to do is let's see if it works or not okay and then let's try to upload this one kiwi byte of sites file okay res status 202 content type okay we have got this so let's see if we come over here Okay, let's try to just refresh this as you can see it has been uploaded directly over here so let's try to upload what if you really upload a file size of above 5 gb would it give an error let's see so what if we really do is if you come over here again uh, let's try to see this tenet movie this is 16 point so it should give an error i think okay okay yeah so it kind of give a bad request because aws kind of recognizes that this file is more than 5 gb itself let's now talk about the multi-part upload 
So what is multipart upload, sir? So previously we have seen that uh, we have seen that we would just uh, send the file name to our server. We would get the pre-signed URL and then directly upload to S3 itself. So what is multipart upload itself? Multipart upload is just exactly the same, but what it really solves the problem is pre-signed URL has the file size limit. So in pre-size URL, you can upload only about 5 GB itself. And in multi-part upload, you can upload unlimited file size. Uh, that is, sorry, it's not unlimited. It's actually five terabyte. So what you can do is, let's say uh, you should have a file size of nine GB itself. What you will first do is you will send the file name. You will get an, a unique upload ID itself. And then what you need to do is, then second part is you will split the file size into different chunks. Now the chunks are really depends upon in which size do you really want to divide. The minimum chunk size is about 5 MB. So does that really mean that you can't upload a file which is less than 5 MB via multi-part upload? Definitely you can. But AWS advises the chunk size should be at least uh, 5 MB. It doesn't really reflect the file size should be at least 5 MB or not. The, but the chunk size should be at least about uh, let's say 5 MB and the chunk number really goes from 1 to 10,000 itself. So you, it's your decision and your business logic decision that how much part do you want to divide itself or not. And then what you need to do is we will just kind of get in URL, a pre-signed URL for all of the part itself. And then what we need to do is we will send this chunk or we'll send this all n number of chunks to SA itself. But we are not done over here. Again, what we need to do is we will need to send a request to let's say complete multi-part upload to really just specify that hey everything is uploaded just stitch the part together and really upload everything on our S3 bucket itself. So what you will do it will collect all of the chunk size it will stitch all the chunk size together and then finally it will upload everything to S3. So before moving forward I would really like you to just kind of show you the S3 multi-part upload documentation. So here is the multi here is the docs of create multi-part upload itself. If you just come here below itself what you can do it will just give you a request itself. So first of all what I really told you that we need to create a pre-signed URL. So this this API would really be helpful for us. This is a API which will really uh, complete our upload. And if you really want to up, if you really want to abort the process in between, so let's say if any, uh, if any, just say if you really there are uh, ten chunks of files, and what you really do is if you really just kind of, uh, if you really uploaded two chunks, and in, in between that, in between let's say the your internet connection went off, what will happen is right now that two chunks will be in S3 bucket, but that will not be really shown, and you will be charged for storing that object. So in case you want to really avoid that you should always use this multi-part upload and obviously I would really say that it's much more better that you should really design your uh, application more redundantly and uh, this uh, and about this multi-part upload I haven't I haven't really mentioned in my slides but what we will just do it we will just take this as a practical example itself so what this list part really does if you come over here so it will just show you the list part what it will does is it will show you how many part it's been really uploaded over there so why is it really important so let's say uh, if you uploaded uh, 2 out of 10 part itself and your internet connection went off so and if internet connection just went alive you can just send a request to AWS like hey how many files have been just sent uh, let's say if I have sent 2 files okay so now I can continue from 3 to 10 so this is more handy and this is much more uh, like future proof you can really say and it gives a multiple flexibility that we haven't seen in case of uh, pre-signed URL itself. So this is much more elaborative. So if you come over here to list multi-part upload. So let's say if this also really does something like that. So let's say it returns 100 multi-part uploads in action. So it always, so if you really want to just kind of get everything. So it's always just to stick with the 1000 number itself. Going beyond that would not probably help you that much and the maximum file size as i told you is just around five terabyte itself so now let's start making it so what we'll do is we will come over here in our front end 
so let's see uh, what we'll do is we will just resume this on comment we will just what we'll do is we'll take this uh, just copy this for now okay, control C and in front end itself what we need to do is control V okay so now if we come over here we say pre sign URL itself right control C and then if we control V say what was there in front end itself let's say multi part okay multi part right uh, hmm. Mm, control D, Control D, Control D. Okay, multi part upload file zero. So now what we need to do is let's say access dot post is equal to URL dot file name, and then everything is just fine, right? So what we say it's like uh, get get unique ID, get unique unique ID. So now let's create another file in API itself called let's say uh, create multi multi part upload dot js. Okay, so now if we come over here, uh, what we need is we will come over here. It's like we'll copy this. It's like uh, we don't need this. It's like create. Okay, sorry, uh, we do need this. We don't need this. It's like okay. Uh, then what we need is like export dot handler async is by async in bracket event event in bracket. Let's say arrow function, and then what we need is this basic stuff. Okay. Then what we need is like const uh, const body equals let's say json dot parse in bracket let's say event dot body okay and then what we do what we need is let's say const file name equals body file name equals body dot file name okay so what we need let's say try catch and one thing about the multi-part upload is that it doesn't really have any expiration timestamp about on you uh, in its unique id itself so to maintain the security itself and to maintain to really enhance the security of your application it's always better that if you are uh, using the multi-part upload itself so make sure that you have a really like expiration timestamp itself so how can you really do that so let's say ttl is equal to let's say i will give you a 20 so i will just kind of give a 20 into 60 into 1000 milliseconds so that means uh, let's say that means equals 20 minutes okay 20 minutes and then what we need to do is let's say expiration select const c o n s t uh, CONST const expire expires equal uh, date uh, date dot now bracket uh, plus TTL okay and then what we need to do is let's say const param uh, params uh, we call let's say what we need to do is let's say bucket uh, we need to define as process uh, dot env dot uh, bucket name bucket name and then what we need is let's say uh, key equals to let's say key key equals to file name and then what we need is let's say that expires ex uh, ex p i r e s expires is equal to expires okay uh, this is more important so that our uh, pre-signed url has a validity so that it doesn't get misused in production so let's say what we do is let's say const equals uh, multi-part upload so it's like p should be capital multi-part 
load or uh, equals let's say uh, await okay await s3 dot create multi-part upload in bracket uh, let's say params params and dot we need to define as promise to promise if otherwise it won't work so now what we need to return is let's say when within our api itself so what we need to do define is copy this same thing um, come over here let's say upload id let's say let's say 200 status with upload id equals let's say upload id equals let's say mul multipart upload dash uh, upload id so yeah there, there it goes so let's see if everything is works so no uh, we don't want this over here okay uh, let's say and then uh, over here itself let's say multi-part upload say get unique id hmm. come over here say like uh, let's say over here the function name is about let's say get uh, get unique ID get upload ID and let's say API dot uh, create say CREAT create multi multi-part multi part multi -part load dot handler and here what we need to define is if we come over here say yeah copy if we come over here we need to paste it exactly over here and then what we need to define as post to true and post to true so now let's see if everything is right okay everything is just right come come over here sls deploy oh one thing that i forgot is like let me just uh, forget this it's like uh, we, def we did not define error anything so let's say control c control v uh, error let's say 500 uh what we define as if we come over here okay uh, console log hmm. this is more sufficient and let's say okay hmm. Hmm. okay let's try to deploy it right now hmm. So now what we need to do is let's say uh, we will copy this uh, and yeah if we come over here say everything is still the same nothing has changed much so let's try if everything works or not so if you come over here we don't want this let's say if we come over back here uh, let's say to come over this 5gb bin try to uh, open this and try to send file okay what what was that error is there okay so it says that there is no error and module over here so what we can do is let's say i think the c should be small yeah okay let's try to deploy it again let's try it right now let's choose the file uh let's say 5 gb over here let's try to send this uh okay Oh, the key should be capital now. Yeah. Okay, the error that I really got right now is the key. The K should be capital. Deploy. Okay. Uh, if everything went well, then we should get our upload ID itself. So now let's try it again. Okay. So let's try this. Five uh, GB. Okay, and then try to send this. Okay. So now. Finally, finally, we have got our unique ID upload itself. So what to do right now? Okay, just come over here uh, in front end itself. So what if, if you come over here, what would was data dot upload ID itself, right? We need to reframe this structure into more uh, like a constant as well. So what we need to do, let's say, if we just comment it out for a while, uh, what we need to do, let's say const, uh, const upload, upload id res const upload id res 
and that means response is equal to uh, await uh, awa awa it await uh, access dot sorry alexa not alex access dot uh, post in bracket let's say uh, url and then comma what we need to do is let's say uh, hmm, let's say what it was bracket file name comma file dot name okay and then what we need to do is let's say uh, let's say cons upload upload id equals upload id res dot dot data sorry it was dot data dot uh, let's say what it was uh, if we come over in multi part upload let's say upload id it's like okay and then let's see here let's see what we do is let's say console dot log if everything worked fine then let's say upload uh let's say upload id okay and then let me just wrap everything in try catch itself okay uh control x try catch okay Con uh, over here let's say okay yeah Hmm, we don't really need this one okay it's like here yeah. i think there is a problem and we will not do this okay yeah one thing that we forgot is like without a sync there can't be any await right okay a w a w a i t it's like await itself then what we need to do is let's say console dot uh, error in bracket error uh, error okay it's like e double r and let's say here it's also e double r let's try it out hmm. select again this 5gb file okay okay so show what we have got our unique id itself so now what we need to do is we will need to store uh, this id itself in the session storage so what we'll do is session s e double s session storage dot uh, set item in bracket let's say what we do is let's say upload uh, upload id let's say upload id upload id uh, comma uh, let's see it should be small case in camel casing right just to make sure the consistency is maintained everywhere okay upload id itself right now and then so let me just take a moment and really explain why are we doing this so since we are in the vanilla javascript as well uh, the fact that we have if i was using react i would probably have been using the the react state use state as well so the fact that we are using uh, this session storage is just to uh, get that uh, just to get the unique id and if in case if you want to really abort the op operation we would can we would get the value from the session storage we can get the unique id and we can send the request to really stop our uploading process so in the lay in the ending of the video we can really see uh, how we will really abort the upload process so now let's come over here so what we need to do is we will need to define a let's say chunk size we need to define or we need to divide our file into many pieces so what we need to do is let's say const chunk 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 size size -E, chunk size equals 10 into say 10 uh, into 1024 into 1024 um, i am taking a binary unit that means it's a 10 maybe byte 10 m i m i m i b 10 maybe byte okay so now what we need to do is let's say chunk count 
कॉन्स्ट कॉन्स्ट चंक सी एच यू एन के चंक काउंट इक्वल्स इक्वल्स लेट से मैथ मैथ डॉट फ्लोर ब्राकेट वॉट वी नीड इज लेट से फाइल साइज लेट से वी वी हैव डिफाइंड द फाइल साइज लेट से से कॉन्स्ट फाइल एस आई जेड ई इक्वल्स फाइल डॉट एस आई जेड ई फाइल डॉट साइज ओके दैट शुड बी फाइन इट्स लाइक फाइल डॉट फाइल डॉट साइज एस आई जेड ईट्स लाइक फाइल डॉट साइज and then what we need to do is let's say if we come over here say file uh, file size divided by chunk count chunk size plus 1 okay and then what we need to do is so let's say for now let's say what we need to do is we will console log console dot log uh, let's say चंक चंक सी एच यू एन के चंक काउंट इक्वल्स से सी एच यू एन के चंक सी एच यू एन के चंक काउंट ओके एंड देन वॉट वी नीड टू डू इज लेट से वी विल जस्ट कम ओवर हियर and we will just get our thing uh let's try to just go over here okay the chunk count is 477 if you come over here let's try to see the tenet movie and uh, okay how much it is so i can see it is giving me 1600 or more than 1600 so in, in if you come over to our uh, application itself uh if we come over to the session storage so as you can see it's storing our upload id in our session storage uh for now let's move on forwards to really implement our own let's say to get the upload id itself uh, upload id pre sign id i mean but before that we need to define as let's say blank uh multi multi upload array Upload array equals to blank. So why are we doing this? We will just see later words. So right now, for now, what we need to do is, uh, let's say for in bracket let upload count upload c o u n t upload count equals one comma sorry semicolon and uh, upload count upload count less than upload count less than chunk count plus 1 comma what we need to do is uh, upload count plus plus that means we will increment this so now what we really need is let's say uh, say let start equals uh, in bracket upload count upload count minus 1 that means we are starting it from almost 0 uh, into it's like 0 or 1 uh, into chunk count into chunk size okay and then what we need to do is like let's say as end uh, let end equals upload count uh, into chunk size okay into chunk size and then what we need to do is let a uh, blob let's say let file blob file blob equals uh, let's say upload count it's like which we will need as a ternary condition like if the file block and the upload count upload count is less 
then the upload uh, upload chunk the upload upload cloud upload count is less than chunk count question mark then what we need to do is we will just kind of do its phi dot slice and then what we'll do is let's say start and then end so what it will essentially do is it will go by step by step and step process it will just take one piece at a time and then it will upload so and if if it if there is only one part if it if there is only one uh, piece then what we'll do is let's say file dot slice sl file dot slice is equal to start okay and then what we'll do is for example for right now let's just uh, get our pre-sign itself let's say get uh, let's say get uh, signed s i g n e d signed url res uh, equals await await axis axis dot post uh, in bracket let's say uh, what we what it was there so okay let's try to modify it bit one so let's say if we will come over here control x so now what we need to do is let's say okay come over here hmm. okay give it as a template string okay and then what we need to do is uh, give this dollar sign and then what we'll do is come over here come over here now it's much more equivalently worth so copy this copy the same over here instead of this one what we'll do need to do is uh, get upload part within that what we need to define some parameter condition as file name as let's say file uh, dot file dot name let's say what we need to define as uh, part number p a r t n u m this is mandatory part number is let's upload count upload count and then what we need to do is let's say upload id is equals to uh, upload id okay and then let's try to just uh, console log this one uh okay let's try to console dot log uh let's say get signed uh, url get signed url res okay so for now we need to create our own uh, let's say get upload function as well so come into the api what we really need right now is uh, get upload part get upload parts not js so now come over here let's try to copy everything i mean not everything just come over here then some basic stuff like uh this one and uh, let's copy this one copy uh, get upload part let's say exports dot handler handler equals async async in bracket uh, event and then what we need to do is come over back and then it's like uh, let's come over here is so now what we need to do is basic try catch let's say try and catch so no this one try see try catch let me just get all of this return so it always really comes in handy so okay hmm. okay 500 okay and then what you need to do is create so let's say if you come over here copy and 
uh, sorry copy and paste it over here so that is more uh, valuable for us oh sorry we have posted into the wrong one okay so we should come over here upload parts and then paste it over here okay and then what we need to do is let's say console.error okay so let's say within that try itself what we define as uh, let params equals let's say what we need to define as bucket so bucket is equal to process process dot env dot bucket name and then what we need to do is let's say key equals uh let's say file name okay and then what we need to do is let's say if you come over here uh upload id right okay so we need to just get a comma instead of semicolon get a comma and then uh, let's say upload uh, upload id upload id equals uh, let's say upload id we need to define it over here const upload sorry uh, upload id equals body dot upload id okay and then what we need to do is if you come over here again let's say const part and even part number equals body a uh, body dot uh, p a r t n u m part number okay and then <clears throat> and then what you need to do is upload id come over here part p a r t part number is equal to uh, okay it should be capital okay and then what you need to do is if you come over here so it's a part number right and then what we need to do is let's say uh, uh, pre-signed pre-signed url equals await await uh, s3 dot get signed url in bracket let's say upload uh, upload part and then what we need to do is we need to define as params over here and then what we need to do is let's say uh, we need to return it right and if you come over here it's like uh, uh, let's say pre s i g n e d u uh, r l is equal to let's say we need to return it over here it's like uh, pre signed u r l if that is not wrong then uh, let's check it over here again what we are sending the bucket name is derived from here uh, let's say file name is equal to file name upload number is equal to upload count upload id is equal to this okay and then over here it's like okay this is fixed so now let's try to what we need to do is for each part as well what we need to do is we come over here what we need to do is let's say chunk count uh let's say C H U N C H U N K C O U N T chunk count and then what we need to do is let's say define as again uh, let's if it works or not just to make sure let's say like uh, get uh, s i g n e d u uh, r l res res dot d a t a it's like d a t a dot uh, pre s i g n e d u r l let me just confirm it again from here okay um, okay uh hopefully if everything works fine let me just comment it for a while okay and then let me just try to fire it up come over here again hopefully we should not get any error uh, let's try to send this 5gb file okay 
okay this has been blocked i was sure that we would quite get an error so let's try to check what we have got oh one thing that i was i did forget that we didn't actually deploy it like here over here it's like i was so in hurry that i almost missed that it's like okay uh yeah so it's like what we need to do is get upload part it's like and what we need to do is get upload uh, it's like create right get upload for create get upload parts parts dot handler uh, what's this one it's like get upload part right uh, over here and then what we need to do is okay come and paste over here so again sls deploy okay so now everything is, is deployed let's try and check it again over here uh 5gb file okay yeah uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. So as you can see, okay, there is something wrong for now. Mm hmm. If we come over here, this is not chunk count. It's really like, uh, it's start. S T A R T. If I'm not wrong, say upload count. Okay. Say upload C O U N T. Just a minor improvement. Let's try to see if it works okay okay as you can see it's getting me every file every year uh, over here let's say hmm interestingly it has been stopped over here right about for 477 that means up to right now it's just working absolutely fine let's move on forwards so now what we need to do is let's say We'll just uncomment this and now what we need to do is we will kind of really send this file using fetch. Now why fetch? Uh, earlier I was using and trying to send this for uh, really uh, send this pre send the earlier I was trying to send my file blob using axis but it wasn't giving me this error. So that's why I switched to axis and it really works fabulously fine. So what we will do is right now so let uh, upload upload chunk uh, let's say upload chunk upload chunk is equal to await await fetch fetch in bracket let's say pre signed uh, pre s i g n e d u r l so what is that that is none right so first of all what we need to do define is const uh, pre s i s pre sign url is equal to get sign url res dot data dot uh, pre sign url okay and then what we need to do is uh let's say we need to find this okay what we need to define is let's say over here it's like method we define as uh, put put and then what we define as body b o d y body to let's say file blob okay and then ultimately what we will need is it's like let's say console log console dot log uh, upload chunk Load chunk and then what if, then what we'll need is let's say we need as e tag header now here it comes the role of e tag what is e tag i'll just surely explain in a while so let's say e tag header equals let's say upload chunk upload chunk dot header so let's say headers dot get in bracket let's say it was E T E T A G. If we come over here, so this is an E tag header. 
So what this ETAC header is, basically if you come over to the documentation itself and really see all of these things that when you really need to complete, uh, when you need to, when you, when you will fire the complete upload, it will really demand for really an ETAC header itself. So you need to kind of really uh, do and really, really kind of need to expose an ETAC header in our, in, in our S3 bucket itself. So in our case, we have uh, configured it really properly. And even if you really come over here and try to just uh, see the properties or the permissions, okay? So let's see the uh, bucket course policy. Let's say the ETAC header is kind of really exposed over here. So which will really send us a unique ETAC header every time uh, once the chunk is been uploaded. So this is really needed in order to really complete our upload over here itself. So what we will do is we will come over here in our front end and then what we will do is let's say uh, we console.log and we will just what we will do is e tag, e tag header and then what we will do is let upload chunk, upload part, uh, let's say upload part, upload part details equals uh, what we need to do is let's say e tag say e t a g equals so why are we doing this because uh, previously we have seen uh, we have seen the syntax about uh, how it really accepts in order to complete the uh, upload uh, multi part upload process so that is what we are going to do here so let's say e tag header and then what we'll do is we'll do it part num p a r t part number equals to let's say uh, upload upload count and then what we'll do is let's try to come over here and let's try to just uh, push it over here let's say multi multi array dot push in bracket let's say uh, upload upload part details okay and let's try to just console uh, log let's try to just console dot log in bracket multi part upload array okay so i hopefully it should work so if you come over here as the operation let's try to upload that 5 gb file okay and let's try to send this So as you can see, it's just been getting over here. Uh, for now, I will just really abrupt this process and will uh, before really seeing, as you can see, this is really getting me uh, various numbers. So let's say if you come over here, this upload object has been just over here. Okay, if you come over here, object 11. Hmm. So that means that everything is working fine. Uh, for now, I will just really just kind of really refresh this, okay? Uh, if you come over here what we'll do is uh, for right now okay let's try to see where we are here hmm. Hmm. we'll just bring this down so that it won't really cons go won't get console log every time but uh, before really completing the upload process i would really like to just kind of uh, do the abort process Oh, sorry, I will really kind of go in sequential manner. Just kind of uh, go and complete the upload process itself. So now what we really need is so let's say so let's say const complete upload complete upload uh, itself equals await await uh, axis dot post post in bracket. Let's say what it was like URL template strings back text as like in the UR L and then what we need to do is let's say complete complete upload and then what we need to do is let's say we need to define as here and then what we'll need is let's say file name equals file name and then what we'll do is what we we'll need is here is PA uh, RTS parts equals uh, multi upload array and then what we'll do is we'll come over here uh, upload ID and then what we'll do is 
upload id okay and then now what we'll do is let's say we'll console log console dot log let's say complete complete upload so now in the back end let's try to create a complete upload itself right complete upload dot js complete upload dot js uh, let's see what we need over here is okay basically everything is just the same copy and paste it over here so within the param what i really need is uh hmm. const file name is equal to body dot file name and then let's say const parts parts is equal to uh, body dot parts it's like if i'm not wrong let's uh, re correct over here okay body dot parts and then what we'll do is if we come over here again there is let's say upload id const upload upload id equals uh let's say upload body dot upload id okay and then within the params itself what we really need is let's say key is file name and then within multi part it's like hey upload id is upload id okay let it be just there so what we, what we need right, right now is let's say capital m u l multi part upload let's say what we need to do is okay what we do is uh p a r t s parts to p a r t s parts okay and then finally complete upload is equal to await s3 complete multi-part upload okay and then what we'll do is we'll give the params slide okay we'll just remove this okay and we will just promiseify with promise so then what we'll do is let's say complete upload uh for example let's say it will give us complete upload right okay for now everything seems uh, well and defined over here let's come over to our serverless framework and try to deploy so now if we come over here okay okay let's say uh, complete complete upload it's like within that api itself what it was complete upload and also this is i think yeah this is complete upload okay hmm uh okay then if you can post over here this is slash and do it as say slash doesn't really matter that much and then sls deploy okay everything has been done so now let's try of oh, one let's try with this one okay uh for a moment we will try to upload a really small false small uh, file size let's say i will upload my screenshot over here i will do over i will just take over here try to send this okay uh, complete upload itself right hmm what's the error right now we come over to the cloud watch uh just open this okay uh, log group say complete upload say come over here it's like uh, okay what's this message uh, see unexpected token cons okay let's try to do it cons over here again and let's try to deploy it again so let's deploy so now uh, finally it's been done uh just make make, make sure that uh, you don't end up in getting some syntactical errors so let's try to come over here 
let's say let's try to send this file okay and then let's try to get the screenshot and then let's try to send this okay now what's the problem it's been blocked by course error is not defined it's like okay now it should be there uh, so let's deploy so now finally let's try to do it again we'll come over here uh, i'll try to upload this screenshot let's try to send this okay now what's the error again the error is about the part number itself right uh, unexpected key part number right oh the error that i really realized is the part number p should be capital uh aws really doesn't uh, aws user pascal and we are maintaining on so that is where the issue is coming so let it be let it just come over here again and let's try to upload the screenshot uh hopefully it works yeah let's try to see complete upload data it's like yeah this is the location come over to our s3 bucket as you can see the screenshot has been uploaded successfully so now let's try to upload our tenant movie itself uh, but before that uh, before uploading tenant itself what i will do is i will create another uh, i will create another in front end called let's say bot uh, ab front end front end bot bot multi multi-part upload dot js if i'm not wrong uh, let's can close over here let's also close this uh, get parts complete part is almost finished so, the, so that's why we don't need this uh, right now let's say if we come over here front end front end abort Content about multi part upload, yeah. So if it's there, so right now, where is this bucket button board upload BTN? Right? So if you come over here, what we do is like document dot get element by uh, get element by ID bracket. Let's say now what we need is a board button BTN uh, event listener. It's like all we need is click then an arrow function and then what we'll do is let's say console uh, log just like we don't need a console log what we need is const multi-part uh, file input equals document if you come over here it's like if you come over here this is exactly basic things that we need okay oh hmm. uh, yeah so what we really need right now is we don't need the file size just we are okay with the file name itself so now what we need is let's say const upload id so here the session storage will be of utmost useful uh, session upload id equals let's say session storage session storage dot uh, get item in bracket upload id session storage dot get item in bracket let's say upload uh, id so we will check this if this is the parameter or not if we come over here uh, front end itself right okay so hmm, it's like upload id okay come over here paste it exactly same yeah and then what we really need need right now is const const url equals axis uh, and then what we need is like let's say const url itself like uh, this is our uh, where it was so this is our upload we need this control c and then it will come over here control v okay and then what we'll do is we will really just come over here and then uh, if we come over here let's say console.log 
uh, file name equals file name and then what we'll do is upload id equals upload id okay and then what we'll do is we'll need to send this so what we'll do is axis dot let's see we don't want alexa axis dot uh, post in bracket let's say uh, again template strings uh, what we need is dollar sign and then url then what we'll do is let's say slash uh, complete let's say abort upload so we need to pass the day payload as data let's say file name is file name and then what we need to pass the data is upload id to as upload id okay uh, and let's say what we do is then then catch okay uh, let's try to do this let's double then let's say console uh, dot log uh, res okay uh, res and then let's say console dot error in bracket e double r so let's create a function in api itself let's say abort abort upload dot js okay and then what we'll do is we will take some of the common parameters over here let's say it was a pre-sign right let's say we'll come over here and then what we'll do is what we we'll need here is export sports dot handler equals let's say uh, asy async in bracket ev event and then what we'll do is we'll come over here cons body again body by body equals json dot pass in bracket event dot body okay then again try cache block double r so what we'll do is if we come over here complete right uh response this is like return if we come hmm, uh, abort upload let's say try for error it was there is some everything is just the same uh country come, come over here hmm paste it over exactly same thing over here and now what we really need is let's say try let's say we come over here file name uh, equals body dot file name and then what we'll do is const upload upload id is equal to body dot file name Okay, and then what we'll do is, uh, sorry, upload ID now. Upload ID. If we come over in front end, uh, upload itself. What we'll do is, we'll close everything right now. Hmm. It's like front end. Okay, upload ID. Okay, and then. Okay. Yeah. So everything is just same. Double check. So yeah so what we really need right now is let's say uh let parms params is equal to uh bucket buck uh, equals process dot env process dot env dot bucket bucket name and then what we'll do is uh we need a key uh what we'll do is let's say file name and then what we'll do is upload id I'll say it should be capital uh, upload ID upload ID and then let's say let's say to just uh, upload ID okay finally what we'll do is we'll come over here so what we'll do is finally let's say const uh, abort abu abort upload equals to s3 dot abort multipart upload in bracket params and then what we'll do is we'll define as promise then let's say control over here and then finally what we'll do is let's say okay yeah so it's been about upload and about upload is done 
so we need to deploy it really right then first what we'll do is we'll copy everything over here uh, let's say control paste and then what we'll do is control d control d and then what we'll do is a b o r d uh, or upload let's uh, just sls deploy let's try to do over here let me just take this 5 gb file let me just upload this send this button over here and then let's try to abort this so as you can see it is giving an error uh, reset connection that means it has been successfully aborted so if you come over here it, it's giving me a blank response uh, which should really do it should really do much more thing now finally let's try to upload a movie tenet okay so i have deliberately stopped this so now what we'll do is for over here let me just come over here and then what we'll do is uh, front end multi part front end multi part upload right hmm. we will just resume this okay so that we will get a clear idea about where it was okay we'll try to upload this and we will take this example okay so there you go it was a pretty rough journey but i'm hopefully sure that it is it's been really uh, you have gained some valuable insight in whatever i have done so let me know what your thoughts are uh, let me know how it could have been done more better what is the suggestion what is the thing what is the thing that you really like uh, make sure to like share subscribing to the channel is much more important till then stay connected and i see you next time